So last week, I asked my community on Mastodon to recommend terminal utilities and programs that they couldn't live without on Linux. And, well, even though I made that form expire after only 48 hours, I got over 187 answers, most of which had three different recommendations. So I looked through every single one, and I picked the ones that I felt would be most useful to most people. And of course, if you missed that boat, because I only shared that specific form on Mastodon for two days, you can also recommend all the terminal utilities you use very regularly down in the comments below. And if you like this concept of asking the community what they like and then recommending those things in a specific video, then like this video specifically and I'll make sure to make more along the same lines, not just for Terminal, but for everything Linux related. Now, before we get started, I'm going to tell you all about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Proton Mail. You probably know about them already. They offer a private, zero access, and end-to-end -end encrypted suite of online services, including an email address, a calendar, online storage, a VPN, and a password manager. Proton doesn't sell access to any of your data, and they can't even access it themselves thanks to encryption. So you can rest assured that everything you send or store there is safe and they even let you plug your email accounts into a desktop email client using Proton Bridge. But on top of that, they recently announced their own desktop app for Proton Mail in beta. It's currently available for macOS and Windows, and don't worry, the Linux version will be coming shortly, and all paid Proton subscribers can already give it a try while it's in beta. In the meantime, you still get to use all the great features of Proton through their webmail, including blocking email trackers, easy importing of your existing emails, contacts and calendars, snoozing emails or scheduling emails to be sent at a specific time, email aliases, and a lot more. Your Proton account is free and to take advantage of more advanced features or just more storage space, you have paid plans that should fit every need. So click the link in the description below and get started with Proton. So our first recommendation today will be Homebrew. A lot of you probably already know about it, but if you don't, it's sort of a prerequisite for this video to get a lot of command line utilities that your distro might not have packaged. It's really well known on macOS because it brings a ton of tools Apple doesn't ship, but for Linux, it is also a great package manager to install command line programs without having to add tons of external repos. You can install Homebrew really quickly with just one command line and add it to your path. It's all explained on their website or after you run the command to install it. And then you can get basically any terminal utility you want by running brew install followed by the name of the tool you need. Almost all of the command line utilities I'll recommend there can be installed using Homebrew, which is why I'm starting with it. Now, our second pick is FZF for Fuzzy Find. It lets you search files extremely fast using their names, but it can also look through command history, processes, bookmarks, git commits, and more. You can just type fzf-q followed by a string of characters and it will look through all the files in the current directory you're in. Although it will return any path that contains your string of characters, not necessarily the exact word you typed. You can run it with dash e to find only exact matches, which will narrow down the search. It also has a vim plugin and you can of course use a pipe to make it search for something another command returned. It also has a bit of a syntax that you can use. For example, you can add a dollar sign at the end of the search term to find items that end with it, or you can add an exclamation point before the search term to find stuff that doesn't contain it. It is blazing fast and it will definitely enhance any file search that you need to do on your system using the terminal. It's available using Homebrew. Now, if, like me, you have wasted minutes, maybe even hours, pressing up in your terminal to try and find a specific command that you ran a few months ago, you might want to try Atuin. This thing replaces your shell history with a database that you can search through super easily. Once it is installed with Brew, you will have to configure it. Their website has all the steps to do that. And after you've restarted your shell, as in just log out and back in, once you press the up arrow key or control plus R, you will get a search interface to look for all your commands. 
You can type what you're looking for, in my case most of the time it's FFmpeg, and you'll filter through the entire history. Select the command with the arrow keys and either press enter to run it again or press tab to edit the command before running it. It is a really, really useful program, one that I plan to use from now on instead of the up arrow key strategy because yeah, it's just much better. It is available through Homebrew as well. Now I couldn't avoid this next one, it's called Chimois because it's a French name, it means my home or at my home. This tool lets you manage your personal configuration files, called .files because, well, they tend to start with a dot because they're hidden files. Chemois lets you share these config files across devices by syncing them to a Git repo and it can interface with a very large variety of password managers to keep everything safe. If you spend an insane amount of time customizing everything that you use or do, and you know how Git works, Chemoi is probably the thing you need, as it has a similar command structure than Git. You can back up everything, so if you need to reinstall, you don't lose anything, and if you need to replicate that configuration on another device, you also can. The difference with other .file managers is that it can encrypt all the secrets that might be inside these .files, and it works as a single binary, so if you usually have your own custom scripts to handle all of this, well, it saves you the install of a full environment to be able to run those scripts. Now, personally, I do not need this. I don't spend a lot of time customizing things and I don't care if I lose my dot .files, honestly, but if you spent hours or months ricing your desktop or really tweaking your system, you might really want to use something like this. Now, if you use a laptop and you find Linux's battery life to be a bit subpar, well, first check that your browser has hardware acceleration on, because that's the most common cause of battery usage for people who watch videos. And second, maybe look at PowerTop. This is a tool developed by Intel that lets you monitor your power usage and lets you automatically tune things so you can get the best battery life without killing your performance entirely. This one is not available from Homebrew, but most distributions should have it either pre-installed or at least in their repos. Now, if you want to check what is waking up your CPU often, you can just run the command PowerTop and you'll see all processes. Using tab, you can navigate to various statistics, but also to the tunables screen, which will show you what PowerTop identifies as a bad configuration for battery life. If you would like to change these, you can run PowerTop dash dash auto dash tune and it will change all the settings to what it believes are good options for battery life saving, although it might impact the performance. And you can also run PowerTop as a system D service if you want, so you can ensure that all this tuning is also done every time you restart the computer. It is a nice tool to try and regain some battery life, but don't blindly apply all of the configurations. You might end up with some data loss if, for example, you tell your hard drive to shut down as quickly as possible, or you might lose some performance. So test out all the options and see what works for you and what doesn't. Now, if you would like to quickly analyze what uses a lot of disk space on your computer or in a remote server, you might want to replace the du and df commands with dust. Dust will give you a more detailed representation of your disk space consumption with ASCII bars and a very legible color system. With that, it's super easy to identify what is hogging up your hard drive and either clean that up or take the necessary actions. You can, of course, get a more minimal view using the dash B option to remove the bars or the dash C option to remove the colors and you can run that program in a specific directory or you can exclude certain directories and files. In my opinion, it's much more legible than what du offers because it's not necessarily meant to be piped through another command, which is how du is generally used, and I can only recommend dust instead. And you can install from Homebrew as well, just like most of these programs. Now, if you run a dual boot and you're facing problems with accessing one of your installed systems, you might not know that you can force grub to reboot into a specific system just for the next boot. It's also useful if your computer tends to skip that grub screen and you're not fast enough to tap the necessary function or escape key to display that screen. Now you can do this using the grub-reboot command, followed by the number or the name of the grub entry for the system you want to reboot in. 
Very useful if you can't manage to boot into a specific system you have installed or if you completely broke the one that you're currently using, you ended up in a command line and you don't quite know what you're doing or if you're going to be able to reboot into something else. Now, if you need to monitor for resource usage on your computer, you might be using top or htop, but btop is, in my opinion, a better option. It looks much, much better than htop or just top, and it's also more legible. It can monitor your disk usage, the RAM usage, the network use, the battery life, and even the GPU if you want. You can sort all of the processes using the arrow keys. The current filter is displayed in the top right corner of the processes list. And you can hit a letter key to interact with a process, like pressing K for kill. It's basically a full system monitor in your terminal. It's very, very nice. I have replaced top or an H top with B top now. It's just good. It's available through Homebrew. If you often use the cat command to read a file, maybe try bat instead. It does the same thing, but it also has syntax highlighting for a bunch of files, and it communicates with git to show modifications in files with the usual plus and minuses symbols for the lines that changed. It can also show tabs and spaces, and it integrates with other tools like fzf, ripgrep, or even the man command, so your command line manuals will look much more legible. It is a great replacement for cat if you'd like to use something fancier, and it's also available from Homebrew. Now, speaking of manuals, if man is too much for you and it's just too much reading, why not try TLDR? I'm pretty sure I mentioned it previously on the channel, but it's really good. It gives you an abridged version of the contents of man for most of the available programs and commands, and it makes things more legible and easier to parse at a glance. You can run it using TLDR followed by the command name and you're done. I basically replace 90% of my use of the man command with TLDR. And if you need the full manual, it's still available. So yeah, install it using Homebrew as with virtually everything I already mentioned. Now, if you like to split a terminal or a TTY into multiple terminals, Zellij or Zellij is a nice alternative to something like Tmux. It's basically a tiling window manager for your terminal workspace. You can define your own layout, it supports plugins, floating panes, and more. You can run it by running the Zellij command, and then you can create a new pane, pressing Alt plus N. You can move a pane using Ctrl plus H, and then placing it where you want and pressing Enter, or you can make a pane floating with Ctrl plus P, then W. Panes can be resized as well with Alt plus D plus or the minus key, and with Alt plus a bracket key, you can move a pane to the bottom or the top of another one in a vertical stacking layout. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of tiling window managers, and I don't really need a terminal multiplexer like this one, but if you do, Zellij or Zellij, not sure how it's supposed to be pronounced, is actually a very good choice. Another one that was recommended was BYOBU or Bioboo, uh, and both of those are available in Homebrew. Now, if you often use ls to find files in a directory, you might want to take a look at EZA. It does the same job, as in it lists the content of a directory, but it does it with way more details and a more legible interface. It can give you the status of files in a Git repo, it can give you more readable dates and readable file sizes, it can give you the SE Linux context, some mount point details, and more. Now, you will have to learn the various options for EZA because they're not exactly the same as with the ls command, but honestly, it provides a more legible output, and I think it's going to simplify the life of a bunch of people. You can install it using Homebrew. And these are just a few examples of what has been recommended. The list was obviously too long for me to cover all of those. But if you liked the video enough, I might revisit this topic in the future and take a look at the options I didn't elect to cover in this specific video. But in the meantime, let me tell you about our sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. If you need a new device to run Linux on, maybe it's time to stop buying devices that only support Windows and to actually buy something from a manufacturer that supports Linux, like Tuxedo. They have a big range of devices from laptops, NUCs, and desktops. Whether you need something for office work, for gaming, a workstation, whatever, they have it all. All the hardware is pretty customizable. And for laptops, you can open them, repair them, upgrade them. You can have your own logo engraved on the lid. You can pick your own keyboard layout. 
It's just really, really nice. I only use devices from Tuxedo computers these days. My main computer that I run the channel on is an Infinity Book Pro 16, and my gaming console is a Tuxedo Cube that I run SteamOS on. So if you need a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, and you want to support a company that actually supports Linux, because Tuxedo Computers does contribute patches upstream to fix some issues that they encounter in their testing, well, then you can just click the link in the description below and get yourself a device from Tuxedo. They're really, really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you really, really enjoy the video, well, there are plenty of links in the description to do just that. And if you become a Patreon member or YouTube member at any tier, you'll also get a daily Linux and open source news podcast. So check that out in the description. And in the meantime, I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.